CPI is starting to come back down. There was a surprising report yesterday showing that inflation is starting to get back under control. This combined with the jobs numbers that we got earlier this week showing that unemployment is rising makes us think, makes me think that the Federal Reserve is done with their rate hiking cycles and rate cuts are going to happen this year. That seems to be what the market thinks as well. Now, the question for the housing market and how this will affect home prices and buying activity is will we enter into a recession? You know, if we enter into a recession and it's a significant recession, then even though rates are likely to drop, mortgage rates are likely to drop and housing will become more affordable. You know, if people are struggling financially and are unemployed, it's going to be tough for them to purchase a property. However, if we don't enter a recession and rates drop, then buying will be more affordable for many buyers and, and sellers, right? The move up buyer who bought has a starter home now and wants to turn that equity into a larger property. Um, if we're not in a recession, there's going to be a ton of demand. Those move up buyers are going to come back. Buyers who couldn't afford anything the past couple of years are going to jump back into the market. and We could see prices start to shoot up again. So we're going to talk about all that in this video. But before we do, my name is Liam O'Reilly. I'm a realtor with Jerry Riley Real Estate here in Vermont. If you have any real estate needs, all of my contact information is in the description. I would be happy to help you. Um, and let's get into the video. So CPI numbers. This is the report out of the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This is the actual chart that they use, and it shows the breakdown of the monthly increases, the year-over-year -year increases and decreases based on commodity. Now, over here, this far left column is how much everything is weighted. So the all items, less food and energy, this is what the Federal Reserve is looking at most. This is what they're taking. Uh, this is what holds the most weight in their eyes. And that we see increased by 3.3% year over year, which is still above their 2% goal, but you know it's much lower than the readings that we've seen in the past. And then furthermore, when we take a look at the seasonally adjusted percentage changes and the unadjusted percentage changes with the month over month data, we see that their uh, core CPI, the all items, less food and energy, only increased by 0.1% from May to June for the seasonally adjusted and unadjusted changes. Now, when we take a look at all items up at the top here, there's a very top category. This is the headline CPI. We see that the unadjusted percentage change was 0.0%. It didn't move at all, meaning that inflation for everything out there in the economy that the Federal Reserve tracks is not going up or down. It's staying flat, which is a great sign. And then we see here in the seasonally adjusted percentage change, we see that for all items, it actually went down. And when we take a look at these categories here, we take a look at the month over month changes. We don't see many large numbers in these categories, 0.2%, 0.0, 0.1, 0.1, 0 0.5 for fruits and vegetables, you know, relatively low weighted. So most items here, and then as we get into energy, prices are falling month over month. We have uh, fuel oil down 3.1% here. Uh, motor fuel down 3.9%. So some much needed, um, you know, price improvements, actually deflation in those items with prices coming back down. Remember these 0.1 numbers, it doesn't mean that prices are going down. It just means that they're not going up as fast as they were in the past. Now we still have significant shelter inflation with 5.2% year over year, which is down from last month. Remember in May, it was at 5.4%. So it's down slightly year over year still up five and a half percent, but how much it increased, decreased from May. And then it only went up 0.2% um, month over month with the unadjusted seasonal change. And even with the seasonally adjusted change, 0.2%. So overall, this is a great thing for the Federal Reserve. This is a great thing for the housing market and mortgage rates because the, the lower that these inflation numbers come in, the closer we are to the Federal Reserve's 2% stated goal, and with the job numbers showing that the, house, the, the job market is weakening, the Federal Reserve is more likely than ever to cut their interest rates in, in September. Now, we take a look at this article out of uh, News, Newsmax Money. June CPI may shorten the Fed's last mile on inflation. And what I like about this article is they have sources directly from the Federal Reserve um, and so it's important to see what the what the Federal Reserve members are saying about the CPI numbers and the jobs data. And we see here with the information we have received today, which includes data on employment, inflation growth, and the outlook for the economy, 
I see it as likely that Paul that policy adjustments, some policy adjustments will be warranted, Daly said. Um, exactly when that happens is unclear. And this is the San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly. So essentially what she's saying is she's not sure when they're going to cut rates, but with this data, it it seems like things are trending in the right direction and rate cuts are likely to take place in the future here. Now, traders in the markets have baked in a 90% chance of a September rate cut. Now, a week earlier when the jobs data came out, they had it at about 70%, but now they shot it all the way up to 90% and September is not that far away. There's a Fed meeting at the end of July where the Federal Reserve will give us some key insights into their thoughts regarding a rate cut in September. They're likely not going to say that they will cut rates in September, but they're going to, um, you know, the tone of the announcement and how he answers the questions will give us some insight as to if they will cut in September um, or not. And of course, there will be more CPI data, uh, two more reports to look at by their September meeting. There is no August meeting, so September is the, the soonest that it could happen. So now when we take a look at what's going on with mortgage rates, we see that this didn't have a huge effect on the 10-year treasury yield, which is what um, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage trades off of. So we see that it didn't drop significantly. This big drop here was as a result of the jobs data that came out last week, and then it's ticked up slightly since then, but not a huge jump in either direction. I, I expect, if anything, this should bring the 10-year treasury down. Uh, we see it's up by about two basis points, so not very significant um, as of eight o'clock this morning. Um, and then we take a look at mortgage rates. This is uh, New England Federal Credit Union. We can see that they're unchanged at 6.5%. Now, when we're thinking about what is going to happen in the overall economy, the economy is stressed out. We have unemployment rising. We have consumer debt at all time highs. And, you know, there's a lot of Americans right now who are really struggling to, to make ends meet. Uh, and especially if you lose your job, if you don't have much of the pandemic savings left uh, and you're maxed out on credit cards, things, things can be tough for a lot of Americans out there. So when we think about that in relation to the housing market, um, it, you know, I, I'm going to have to do another video on that later this week because um, the the balance here is: will we enter a recession? Will and and how bad will that recession be? Um, because basically, if like I mentioned at the beginning of the, this video, if we don't enter into a recession and rates drop significantly, there's going to be a flood of buyers that jump into the housing market and could eat up the demand or the supply. Um, as fast as it as fast as it hits the market, we've seen supply increase over the past couple months, um, but we could see that supply get taken right out of the market if rates drop and the economy is still strong. However, if we enter into a recession and people can't buy homes, then it doesn't really matter how quickly rates drop or how affordable it is to get a mortgage. You know, if people don't have the income or the savings for a down payment to purchase property, uh, we could see inventory continue to rise and um, you know prices to fall or remain flat. I don't think the housing market is set up for a crash nationally, especially as we're at the end of this rate hike cycle, right? We, we likely won't see rates at around six and a half, seven percent for for too much longer. Probably by the end of this year, it could be even down down around six percent, um, depending on what the Federal Reserve does and the, the numbers that come out. And if if rates drop, you know, the, the lower that rates drop, the more buyers can be in the housing market. Um, and so I think I think regardless of what happens, we're, we're not oversupplied with housing like we were in 2008. And because of that, we're not likely to see a drastic decrease in home prices uh, within the next year or so. Um, so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this video. I love learning from you folks and reading your comments. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.